Robert Golden, who will be talking to us about uh, the school district of Manatee County. So we have speakers and we do that. But we, with each meeting, we also try to have uh, what we call a political action activity, where we ask our uh, club members, both the ones in attendance at the luncheon and those that aren't there, to join us in reaching out to the legislators at the local, state, and federal level and uh, to participate in other activities. So we, we do stuff like that on a regular basis. Last summer, a year ago, uh, we reached out to uh, about 600 newly registered Democratic voters who were from the ages of 18 to 21. And we wrote them personal, individual uh, postcards, uh, thanking them for registration and encouraging them to continue in their involvement in, uh, in voting. So we do little things like that. We have some members, actually a number of members, who don't like to canvas at houses or make phone calls, mm -hmm. but they're willing to do other things. We have a, a core of people willing to reach out by postcards and letter, and we have another core of people who write excellent letters to the editor that appear in the Bradenton Herald and the Sarasota Herald Tribune. So we try to find something for all of our members to feel that they're just not complaining to their family and friends, but they're reaching out and doing something affirmatively to uh, cause change. Well, that's great. I mean, this is uh, certainly a, uh, a turbulent political time, and I think it's important for everyone to be involved. It's, uh, And all of our Democratic clubs in Manatee County usually have a, have various projects and programs where they 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 do sort of like we do. They have luncheons, and mm -hmm. they have speakers, and they do political activities. We have the Anna Marie Island Club, for example, who they write to all newly registered Democratic vo uh, voters, regardless of age. They give them information about the Democratic Party. They give them information uh, about voting by mail. So we we have other clubs and caucuses that are very, very active in trying to bring a positive message to uh, the voters of Manatee County. Well, that's great. Uh, that's and great. caucuses, too, like the Democrat and, and other clubs, like the Democratic Women's Club, very active, very supportive of progressive causes, and you can always count on them to come up with volunteers for the various activities that we uh we share uh share in well do you have any uh upcoming activities you'd like our, our listeners to know about well we're we're planning a uh a august activity but we haven't set a date yet because we are overwhelmed now with what we're doing with registration of returning citizens it's a large commitment that's going to take us a month and a half mm -hmm. to do uh, but once we finish uh that that we'll be g gathering together a group of volunteers who are going to be writing to uh, the people who registered to vote, thanking them and giving them some educational ideas that might help them to uh, to vote. And we, we think one of the most important things is to encourage them to vote by mail because they get that ballot at their house. They can look it over. They can talk to people about it. And they can uh, complete it in the comforts of their own home. So that is one of our, our strongest uh, uh, messages to our, our various communities is a uh, vote by mail. And they can do it by making a phone call. They can go on the website of the uh, supervisor election and do it. So that will be, that'll be uh, a, a wonderful thing. In September, I said our club is uh, having a Reverend Golden School Board member talk about Manatee Schools in October. Uh, we're having a program uh, that it deals with affordable housing in Manatee County and the problems with the lack of affordable housing in Manatee County. Then in November, our club, we meet at Peridia the first Thursday of each month, and then uh, okay. uh, at Peridia Golf and Country Club on Peridia Boulevard. And then on, 
then in November, we're having a regional director of the Census Bureau who's going to come to us because we're very concerned about undercounts in the census. And so we're going to have some tough questions for uh, the Census Bureau representative, and uh, we want to stay on top of that issue to make sure that all of the people who should be counted, citizens and others, are counted. So that's our, our lineup for the fall, those three uh, luncheons. Well, and anybody that, that wants like really to go to any stuff. of those three, anybody that wants to go to those three, all they have to do is uh, email me at P-A-U-L-D-A-I-N-73 at gmail.com, and I'll put you on the list. Okay. That's great stuff. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure there'll be a lot of our listeners that'll be uh, happy to attend that because uh, those are those are some pretty important topics. Um, yeah, we try to uh, we try to do with local issues. We try to do with state issues, and of course, we think it's very important to deal with federal issues as well. Yeah, well, the the, the census issue is a really important one coming up, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about the uh, um, the time and money. This- Yeah, they're going to be, well, just the fact that, you know, making sure they're accurate. You know, there's been questions about how much time and money that the state of Florida is going to spend on it. And, you know, uh, being a a member or a a citizen of Manatee County, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, we, the numbers are correct and everybody is properly represented. And, you know, you have to, it's too bad you have to worry about those things but you have yeah, to worry but about we those do things. especially in this political climate because mm-hmm. uh if the census is so important to the determination of the apportionment of the 435 seats in the united states house of representatives and so right. undercounts mean we'll be under representative underrepresented in the house of representatives so anything that we can do to stay on their backs to make sure they're doing everything they can to count everyone uh, is very important, regardless of age, regardless of citizenship. These people need to be counted. And for the delivery of federal and state funds, we need to have an accurate number of people in each locale as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, you know, that's really important. And, you know, yeah, I, I don't think that people understand that uh, the sense this is not about citizenship. You know, they're trying to turn it into something that's yes. not. It's, it, it's meant uh, to make sure that, you know, a, a district has the proper resources and is properly represented. And, um, you know, uh, I've heard people recently saying, well, if they're not a citizen, you know, we shouldn't be getting money for them. You know, you know they, they're, you know, they're, they're on uh, they're on welfare. It's like, well, no. Actually, most of these people actually work jobs and uh, you know and paying uh, taxes. Article. Yeah, that's what I read the other day that uh, that most uh, uh, people who aren't here that shouldn't be here um, in some people's eyes um, are are they they work jobs, they pay taxes, they pay social security, and they never get to collect on that, and that just goes in the pot and. Yeah. Goes to, goes to people that uh, you know have gone through the citizenship process. So you yeah, know, it, it's kind and, and of with a, the, kind uh, of a misconception. The, the, yes, certainly. And with the recent uh, uh, fear mongering over ice raids in our various communities, there are a lot of uh, Hispanic citizens and residents who are concerned about answering their doors. And so, you know, we have a a significant uh, Hispanic population in Manatee County, too. So if if we come to a house with an Hispanic uh, returning citizen, I could understand by what they might be a little reluctant, because you never know who else is in the house, other family members. And so we do have Spanish uh, forms with us. But we also have to recognize the fact that there's a lot of fear going on now in our communities. And the same will be true, Dan, when it comes to the census, where people right. will, uh, census people will try to reach out to some of these people, and they don't want to open their doors because they don't know 
what that uh, person might be asking them, and it might be a, a, a fake thing to try to, uh, to uh, entrap them into uh, immigration removal. Which is too bad because it seems like there's a the, there's a focus on the Hispanic community and um, unfortunately it's like a half a million yeah white white it's Europeans that have that, that have stayed overstayed their visas et cetera that have come here illegally and, you know, yeah and, so uh, and hopefully they'll when, when they see me uh, walk up to their door tomorrow and when they see a seventy five year old uh, white man. Uh, maybe using a cane because of an injured hip. Hopefully they won't think I have an ulterior um, <laughs> motive on knocking yeah. on their door. Yeah. So Hopefully we're not. optimistic. Uh, that, yeah. Well, that's great. Well, it sounds like it sounds like you're doing a lot of good in the community, and uh, uh, you know that that is really a great thing. We need more people like you. And I'd like to uh, I like to thank you for coming on the show this week. Um, and maybe we'll uh, touch base again uh, later in the year and see uh, see how you made out. That would be wonderful. And I'd like to thank you, Dan, for inviting me to participate in this podcast. Very important issue. Thank you again. No, oh, you're welcome. All right. Well, to our listeners, you have been listening to the Coastal Rainbow Forum, and we hope that you will tune in again next week. <laughs>